Hello, STEM makers. Today, we're going to start with the story, The Pirates Next Door. How would you feel if pirates moved in next door to you? Sometimes someone who's different from you might, might make you feel uneasy, but our main character in the story likes the idea of meeting somebody new and different. The Pirates Next Door, starring the Jolly Rogers. Matilda lived in Dull-on-Sea, a gloomy seaside town, too busy in the summer, and in the winter, it shut down. There weren't too many kids around, and none on Tilda Street, but the lawns were mowed, the cars were washed, and the hedges trimmed and neat. The house next door had been for sale since Tilda was a baby. She hoped a family would move in, with a girl her age, or maybe... A boy, a pirate boy, ahoy! He had no shoes, an eye patch, and a wooden-legged dog, a pirate ship with treasure chests and barrels full of grog. He said, we're the Jolly Rogers. We'll be anchoring next door. We've sailed the seven seas, but now we've had to come ashore. That's my mom over there digging up the grass. I feel a little landsick, but she says that it'll pass. That's Dad over yonder, the captain of our crew. He likes to shout, arg a lot, because that's what captains do. Grandpa won't set foot on shore, says that he can't bear dry land. The last time he left the ship, the king chopped off his hand. That urchin there is called Nugget. She's a rascal, as you'll see, though she can't fire the cannon yet, because she's only three. Next morning, Tilda shouted, Life's not boring anymore! Isn't it fantastic that those pirates move next door? But Mom and Dad were not impressed. The neighbors, they will sneer. The way they dress, the way they speak, they won't fit in around here. Their kids are always playing with the most alarming toys. We'd rather you were friends with the normal girls and boys. On Monday morning, Jim Ladd came to Matilda's school. Though no one else would sit by him, Matilda said, You're cool. You ain't so bad yourself, young lass, for land folk that is rare. Though I'm a scurvy sea dog, you'll be okay right there. The teacher said Jim should wear shoes and his uniform was wrong. She wrote a note, but Jim replied, I won't be staying long. We're only here a little while, so Dad can fix our ship. We ain't cut out for life on land. This day be just a blip. We're the Jolly Rogers. We need to be at sea. School's just grand, but understand, it's a pirate's life for me. After school, a neighbor came round for cake and tea. Her name was Mrs. Bumble from number 33. Miss Pinky called town council to see what they could do. She didn't live through two world wars to have pirates spoil her view. Isn't it disgraceful on such a lovely street? They don't even try to keep their front lawn looking neat. They have to go, said Miss Devine, who lived at number 89. Their teeth are black. Their nails are too. This really, truly just won't do. They never wash. Their kids have lice. They also just don't smell that nice. You smell okay. Um, thanks. They wear old clothes and scruffy hats. I'm told their ship is full of rats. Also mad was Mr. Shore, the grumpy man at 34. He liked to read the paper on his sunlit deck, you know. But the pirate ship blocked out the light, so he said, They'll have to go. I'd like some peace and quiet, but they're fixing up that boat. Hammering all day and night, that thing will never float. The two Miss Yates at 88 told everyone who passed their gate, We saw them grab the mailman. They made him walk the plank. It's lucky he can swim, but we're afraid the mail all sank. They scared the ducks, said Mrs. Snucks, and terrorized the park. They boarded people's rowboats and fired cannons for a lark. Driving home from Bingo, Mrs. Plum got quite a fright. They were digging up the roadside in the middle of the night. They have cutlasses, said Mr. Brown. They'd love to run you through. They'll steal your gold, or so I'm told. Whatever will we do? Mrs. Bevan from 87 marched down to the town hall. She'd collected a petition, 50 signatures in all. They're digging holes and fighting fights. It's the beginning of the end. I've lived here for years and years, and so have all my friends. Before you know it, there'll be more. We'll all have pirates right next door. The Jolly Rogers cannot stay. You must make them go away. That night there was a tapping at Matilda's window pane. Outside was Jim. He whispered, I've got something to explain. 
Whenever we stop somewhere new, the neighbors are unkind. To show them pirates aren't so bad, we leave some things behind. Our galleons now ship shape, so it's time we sailed away. And I'll be sad to leave, because I've enjoyed our stay. But we pirates need adventure to see lands across the ocean. We need cutlasses and treasure maps and lots of suntan lotion. Though our visit here has to end, I hope that you'll still be my friend. To stay in touch, let's send notes. Be sure to use something that floats. Tilda woke up the next morning, puzzled by what Jim had said, but she vowed she'd keep in touch as she struggled out of bed. She opened up her curtains as she gave a great big yawn, and there, to her amazement, was an X on every lawn. Oh, what a shame they left. I didn't say goodbye. They were such a charming family. I think I'm going to cry. I'm such a pirate fan, you know. They wore such lovely hats. I rather liked their singing, and I'll miss their darling rats. After that, the town went on, land loving happily. But Tilda now goes fishing on the jetty by the sea. She's waiting for a message to wash up on the shore from her very special pirate friend, the one who lived next door. So now that it's the summer, you can come aboard our ship. We'll pick you up next Tuesday for a special pirate trip. Jim Ladd. You know what this book makes me think of? Kindness. Matilda showed kindness to a new kid in her neighborhood and school who didn't quite fit in, even when everyone around her was unkind to their family. Sometimes I like to imagine what it might have felt like for Jim Ladd, like um, when he overheard Tilda's mom and a neighbor gossiping about his family, or also heard some adults in the community talking about how they smelled bad and they wore funny clothes. Um, most of those stories were even made up stories. They weren't even truthful, what people were saying about Jim Ladd. Now, for those of you who have older brothers and sisters who go to Mass Landing School, you may have heard that last week they celebrated Kindness Week. This week, we're gonna bounce off that idea a little bit and find ways to be kind like Matilda was to Jim Ladd and how Jim Ladd was to the rest of the people in that community. This week, you have two choices. Choice one is to find a way to show kindness to someone. Maybe you can draw a picture or make a craft or call someone like a grandparent that you haven't been able to see in person for a while. A few weeks ago, my kids and I took sidewalk chalk and we drew hearts and kind words along half of the walking path in town. And then we left a few pieces of chalk behind and wrote that others should add to the artwork. We also have a sign on our lawn with hearts on it, thanking those who are going to work every day. I think it would be a cool idea if somebody thought up making a homemade one and putting it out on your lawn as well or writing a message in sidewalk chalk so that people who go by your house might be able to see it. Choice number two is to show kindness like Jim did in the story by leaving a treasure for somebody else to find. Now we're not going to dig up the lawn and spray paint a big X on it like he did in the story. What I'd like you to do instead is to design a pirate treasure map. Sketch your yard or a room in your house including major landmarks. Then put an X on the map where your treasure will be. Place treasure at that spot, something like a few coins or a piece of candy or a kind note or any object you and the treasure hunter agree ahead of time will mark the spot and let them know they've found the right spot. Challenge someone in your house to find your treasure and see how well they can read your map. 